Bill, to come uh, take the microphone, please. Hey, everyone. Um, so I'm wearing two hats today. I'm here both with Safe Landing uh, and also Just Stop Oil. Um, and I've got this speech planned, but as of about 10 minutes ago, we just found out about Morgan and Marcus, the two young guys that blocked the Dartford Bridge back in October. Most people probably know Marcus, barefoot Marcus with a beautiful singing voice. They've just been sentenced in court and it's not great news. Mark, uh, Morgan was given three years in prison and Marcus has been given two years and seven months. So I don't really have the words to address something as catastrophic as that for our movement, but I guess all I want to do is just for everyone to keep those two beautiful human beings in your hearts today as we sit here enjoying ourselves. Two beautiful human beings are going to be locked in a cage for a long time now, and that is an absolute disgrace. And somehow I've got to move on to the speech I've got planned, which I find really hard. But um, my name is George, um, and as of December last year, I was uh, an operational airline pilot for EasyJet. Um, and I have a bit, have had a bit of a crazy journey. When I qualified to be an airline pilot three years ago, I joined Extinction Rebellion about a month later. Um, and at that time, I truly believed that aviation was green. Um, I think the seven-year-old kid inside me that wanted to be a pilot wanted to believe what the industry was telling me. Um, but when we got grounded during the pandemic, I joined the group Safe Landing. There's a big, big white flag there. Give it a good wave. Um, and Safe Landing ruined my life. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of joking. Um, Safe Landing was a really great community of former and current aviation workers but what I learned joining that group was that my our leaders our industry leaders were lying to us and my illusion of green aviation shattered and with it my childhood dream and when I returned back to the industry I pushed really hard I really couldn't stay silent but the longer the more I learned the more I spoke out of work the harder I got pushed back um, I got put on an anti-radicalization watch list for goodness sake um, but I think the nail in the coffin for me was finally, it was a couple of summers ago flying over Spain and I was descending, well we were descending over the Valencian Hills and a, a column of black smoke appeared on the horizon and I had the unfortunate experience of flying over a wildfire and for that moment in time I was confronted with the stark reality of what the fossil fuel industry, the aviation industry and quite frankly, my childhood dream was doing to our life support systems. So I made the really tough decision a few weeks later to declare myself permanently unfit to fly and I never have turned to the industry. Um, I think what's something really important to, to, to recognise is that We've got to be really careful with our messaging to not just be blanket anti-aviation. Um, we do, in the aviation industry, we do a security course every year and they put the top threats to the aviation industry. The top one is terrorism and below that is environmental activists, this community. Which is a, which is a good thing and it's a bad thing. <laughs> I think we've got to be really careful to make sure that our messaging is that... We can't just be, we've got to make sure that the big, we put the message out that the biggest threat to aviation and aviation workers is not environmental activists. It's their leaders who are lying to them, telling them that their industry is saving them and doing green aviation. It's just not true. So what we've got to try and make sure is that we are telling a more positive story and we're putting the workers in some sort of a priority. Not massive priority, but we've got to make sure that we're putting their voices forward. So what we're calling for in Safe Landing and in other campaign groups is to call for things like citizens' assemblies, like we have an Extinction Rebellion, but workers' assemblies. So we're putting workers at the forefront, taking the power away from CEOs and away from shareholders and back into workers' hands.
and I was going to talk about a load of other stuff, but I've talked about some really important stuff at the beginning here. And I think what we really got to recognise is if we want all of our campaigns to work, if we want to see that future that we all want to see, we're going to have to step into civil resistance. And the reminder at the beginning of this is that when we step into civil resistance, the state pushes really hard back. And I, I think that announcement at the beginning for me really reminds us what we're up against when we're tackling these fossil fuel industries and these goliaths. So I don't have too much more to say about that other than keeping Morgan and Marcus in your hearts. And all I would say is that use this big one as a springboard into something even more radical and even more effective. You don't have to block the Dartford Bridge, but let's step into civil resistance. And with Just Up Oil, we're slow marching every day, starting on Monday. And if you want to get involved, come and see us at our picket or come to our website.